If I have x dot square, it means x mu dot x mu dot. Okay, that's what I'm doing. So this is fine. Everything is fine. Sometimes, uh, depending upon your convenience, you can keep using the things that you like. Let me let me erase this. <laughs> Okay, so I think I can I can remove this and we have already seen that this guy is always greater than so so this guy is always greater than or equal to zero because we are on the time like word lines because we are on the I'm like word lines, so this guy, this guy, this guy, all these, they are always uh, positive. Okay, so there, there is nothing imaginary. So this is introduced uh, carefully. Okay, the minus sign is introduced carefully, but it is consistent because this whole object is positive. Okay, for time like trajectories, it may not be positive for everything, but for time like trajectory, it would be positive. Okay. Very good. So now we can we can go a little bit further. To these two well-known physicists, uh, Nambu and Goto. And <coughs> now let's analyze it a little bit further. Okay. So we work uh, further with the. Namu Goto, Namu Goto action for relativistic point particle. This is x equal to minus mc times vs, uh, and this is what we have minus mc. And we had tau 1 to tau 2 and the square root of minus f of the square root. Is that fine? That's what we developed just now. So, uh, this is our famous so called Nambu Goto action for the relativistic point particle. And it is we find that this is in the covariant. Uh, description because this x dot square is nothing but x mu dot x mu dot or this is equal to uh, x mu dot x mu dot times return okay so this is a covariant description okay now we are uh, not only dealing with the non relativistic, oh sorry, relativistic point particle, but we are also dealing with the covariant description of the particle. Okay, good. So now let us see few interesting points about this. One thing is let us find out the canonical momentum. So P mu or maybe by capital or P mu of tau. This is the canonical momentum. This is del L over del F mu dot. Here is down space, here is up space. So you take the uh, derivative of this guy with respect to x mu dot minus mc one half mx dot square to the power minus one half one half of this rest is our this one, minus one half uh, yes minus twice x here i have downstairs so this should be downstairs to x mu dot and this you can simplify to and c into x mu dot uh, divided by the square root of minus x dot square and what I want 
it to the right here. I have to use a pop button. Anyway, so that's my canonical momentum. Oh, I was, I was just trying to write separately. This is del over del tau. So del tau of the is is Okay, just I thought I should explicitly write what it means. Similarly, I would also have, well, not now, but in particular, I have only one variable tau. I don't yet have sigma. So next week, uh, when we go to one dimensional strings, then we will also have sigma and we will also have space derivatives. But we will talk about them when we encounter them. Okay, it's better to talk about them there. So, this is now, let me write p square, this is p mu, p mu, so this is going to give me mc x mu dot into mc x mu dot divided by x dot square. So this is then m square c square x dot square divided by minus x dot square. So what I do is I I, I, I take it to uh, I, I transfer it to this side. I have p square I have p square plus mc square into x dot square equals to g. Okay. From this relation, I, uh, I I transfer it to this side and I can write it this way. Okay. And now what it means? Now my this is non-zero and therefore this has to be zero. So I get my mass cell condition and this mass cell condition is p square plus m square c square equal to zero or p square equal to minus m square c square. So this is my mass cell condition for my theory. Okay. The mass cell condition let me remind you in the context of the field theories. Just <laughs> What is the physical significance of the mass cell condition? Mass cell conditions are always fulfilled for physical particles. Okay, this is a this is not a physical particle, this is a virtual particle. So mass cell condition would not be satisfied for, for virtual particles, but it would always be satisfied for physical particles. And this concept holds true. Okay. We are only going to generalize from zero-dimensional vertices to one it spread it vertices. That's all. And we are going to generalize the consideration of particles and fields to one-dimensional strings. Lambert, is this okay? Good. So, yes, very good. So now here, actually, this takes us to a completely different field. If I would have time, I would even even elaborate it further. So actually, this kind of a condition, uh, p square plus m square c square, actually, it is to be written as this weakly equal to zero because actually, it's a drag constraint in the theory. It's a direct primary constraint in the theory. I would I would tell you a little bit later. And because this constraint obeys a particular algebra, which is called as Virasoro algebra. Okay, in string theory, you will find at appropriate time I will mention Virasoro algebra. So uh, therefore, this is called as Virasoro constraint. But at the student level, I would like to clarify this point that. You can't obtain Virasoro constraint directly from anywhere. The only fundamental way of obtaining the constraints in a theory is to go to the Dirac procedure and calculate the Dirac primary constraints like you have in your pure electrodynamics, massless free electrodynamics. What you have is 
that one of the momenta vanishes, if you recollect uh, electrodynamics, and then you have divergence E equal to 0 as a secondary constant and the momentum equal to 0 as a primary constant. So, uh, it is identically the same thing here. Okay. So, this is the primary constant actually, uh, this is the primary, this is actually the primary constraint in the theory, but this is also in the literature uh, when people are not very much familiar with the Dirac uh, constraint dynamics, they, I mean, uh, there is nothing wrong in mentioning it as a Vera Solo constraint because it is after all a Vera Solo constraint, but this is Vera Solo constraint because it satisfies Vera Solo and so forth. Okay, there is no a priori way to, to obtain Virasoro constraints in the theory. Okay. So, so the fundamental way is to go to Mr. Vira and then find out these things. Now, by by after doing this, let's go a little bit further. So let's calculate the canonical Hamiltonian for this theory and let us see what we get. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, so if you, if you, as canonical and, oh, here, wait a minute. Uh, 